What brings us together as humans? It's feelings, isn't it? We all feel, respond and react emotionally to life's ups and downs. We deal with relationships and events all the time. Some we can cope with, some we can comprehend and find reasons for, and others can be really confusing and disturbing. These are some of the queries that challenge people in their everyday lives. In this series, I have attempted to address a few common issues that you may be dealing with or you may know someone else who needs help with these questions. I'd like to remind you that there are no good or bad questions and no stupid people for asking them. There is no stigma attached to anyone who may be troubled because of these issues. This series is to help you or someone you know to get an inspiration and an alternate view of some of the topics we are going to be talking about. These common issues you may find that you relate to them too. So listen on. Join spiritual psychologist and India's number one biofeedback practitioner, Ritu Malhotra, as she guides you through the paths of self-discovery and personal transformation so that you can live in alignment with your values and purpose. You are listening to the Cellular Alchemist podcast and here's your host, Ritu Malhotra. Many times in our day, whether at work or shopping or running chores, we are asked, how are you doing? And before we can actually answer, the other person has turned away. Even when from someone we know comes a, how's it going? We are ready with an automatic answer. All good. I'm fine. Can't complain. It's a routine, robotic answer that we have. I think it's, we do it because it's self-protective. When we reply to formatted questions and answers, we are not having a conversation. This is where conversation dies. I remember when I was in seventh grade, the teacher said to us that someone very important was going to visit our class. At that stage of our lives, we weren't interested in anyone sermonizing us. We knew what it meant. It meant sitting there and listening to another boring and tedious lecture. So our visitor came, greeted us and walked around with a smile. How are you? How's it going? And we all repeated with murmurings of, "Mm, we're okay, all good. Because we could sense that he didn't really want any real answers from us. He was there to lecture us. We knew there would be no conversation. Today, it is a fact that a big part of our day and our lives is spent communicating on every device and platform possible. And yet we seem to be more separate and disconnected than ever. We text more than a hundred times a day. We text more than we even talk. And it's through the filter of a screen that we are doing this. We aren't really engaging with each other, are we? Much of the time, we are not listening to each other. The noise, the chatter reflects the fact that we are losing the art of engaging with each other in authentic conversations. Maybe we never really learned the skill of listening closely to one another and maybe we didn't allow ourselves to share meaningful exchanges to know what it really feels like. Maybe we only learn to share a part of us that we want to be seen, the safe part of us. And that can never be deeper than the surface, can it? I read a very insightful line that says, 
if you are your authentic self, you have no competition. I want to say it again. If you are your authentic self, you have no competition. I don't know who said it, but it cuts right into the heart of this matter. Why don't we listen? I think it's because we would rather talk. And why is talking easier than listening? Because when we are talking, we are in control. And you can talk as long as you like and say whatever you want to. And you don't have to hear someone else's view on anything. Especially if it's not interesting to you. And what is interesting to you? You are. By talking, we can bolster our ego and our identity. I like what the Buddha said. If your mouth is open, you are not listening. It takes effort and energy to pay attention to someone. If you can't do that, you are not in a conversation. So this is something we all need to be conscious of. Giving our full attention in an exchange. It raises the energy of the conversation and we can drop the armor and genuinely relate to another. So be interested. I mean, be present. And it's an energy, you know, so we can all feel when we have someone's complete attention. Haven't you felt that? I have. Another rule of good conversation is not to pontificate. Preachers can get very boring. Instead, go with the curiosity and openness that you have something to learn from another. And for that, you will need to put aside your personal opinion for a while. I find that the most important skill for authentic conversation is to be real. For example, if you don't know something, admit it. Say that you don't know it. Have the courage to ask someone who does know. I have often noticed and experienced that when someone is talking about a moving or profound experience, others in the group start talking about their own. And the energy is totally distracted from that person. I don't know why people do that. Why do you think they do that? And do you ever do that? Do you think that people do that to prove that they too have gone through a profound and moving experience or that they are better in some manner? I don't know. But anyway, whatever the reason, do your best to not insert yourself in someone else's narrative. It's bad manners to say the least. And watch the need to repeat and repeat and repeat yourself. I find people repeat themselves to add impact. And also when people unnecessarily use big words to make a point. This need to impress is a shallow way to seek attention. A few days ago, I read a beautiful line. You cannot herd birds towards you. You plant flowers and wait for them to come to you. Isn't that beautiful? In the same way, we can start by being more attentive and transparent in our exchanges. Of course, that requires the courage to be vulnerable. 